Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to take a look at an autocoder powered by GPT-4 Omni. And actually, it is also instructed by GPT-4 Omni too. And it iteratively built some very cool projects. For example, like this terrarium simulation with plants, herbivores, and carnivores. A side-scrolling game, which gives you upgrades as you actually progress through the game. Now we can shoot our projectiles and it is a level structure. This is pretty complex, 500 lines of code generated over 20 iterations. This diagramming app that we can use, it has many features that actually work, including fill shape, all automatically generated for us. All, almost all the features here work. Again, very complex, 500 lines of code generated over 20 iterations using this autocoder. Also some nice canvas animations with pause and resume. More canvas animations, such as this one, or like this one, where we can actually interact with the simulation. Pretty cool. And of course, tower defense game. As you can see, these towers are shooting projectiles and we have a health bar. If these enemies make it all the way to here, actually our health decreases and we can lose the game. Another version of the tower defense game. And yet another one is these enemies are moving randomly. So it's very creative. Uh, you can come up with quite a lot of different styles and gameplays. So let's start. Let's let's get this autocoder started. Uh, when we run the autocoder auto instructed, there are some options we can choose from. We will talk about the code in detail, but all the code files, the autocoder itself. And all the apps that I've generated will be you can it will be available at Patreon. You can download it there. And if you decide to become a patron, thank you for your support. So when we first run the file, we are asked which type of project we want to work on. .py.html.js. Let's select HTML. This autocoder also have a user guided mode and an automatic mode. So I'm going to say no here. So we're going to run it automatically. Please enter the number of iterations. Let's say ten. And then here we can actually choose from many models, Llama 370 billion from using Grok actually, Opus, Sonnet, Haiku, and of course GPT-40. We are going to choose GPT-40. And we initialize two GPTs. One is the coder, the other one is the reviewer. And I'll also include the sample instructions I have used here. And let's use the last one, which says, let's create a detailed vibrant terrarium. Uh, using only HTML canvas, please don't use any external files. Terrarium is a like a ecological, like it's like an aquarium where it's it's like you know where creatures live, life forms. That's what we're going to try to create simulation of it anyway. So as soon as we run the GPT-40, it's going to write the code and then it's going to go through this review process. It's going to review itself and then it's going to keep on generating. So while this is doing let's let's review some of the stuff and it's all these all the files that are generated it's going to be saved here as you can see working file gpt40.html is saved since we are iterating over we're going to get enumerated files this is the first file we got 158 lines of code let's quickly run it i would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron and some of you may know in the last year and a half i've spent 3000 hours over 300 uh, projects as a patron you will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one the thousand x masterclass teaching how i what i've learned on how to code fast and efficiently also the streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one on one. Check those out as well. And while this is ongoing, we'll talk about some of the older projects. So, this is what it created. Uh, so, it's doing it different than previously, but it's just a new, new creatures are being born, I suppose. Let's see where this goes. When you, when you give it a moment, it's going to improve it and add more complexity to it. For example, this was 100. We already added four more lines of code. But if you look at some of the older projects, like such as this canvas animation, the first one was uh, 94 lines of code, and the final version was 220 lines of code. And this one actually was went from 128 lines of code to 400 lines of code uh, through this iteration process. And similarly with the tower defense games. 
And like I said, this is a user guided mode. If you select that, at each you you get to enter your original instructions in the terminal. And at the end of every turn, it'll check this additional instructions that txt file. So you can enter your instructions here. If you didn't want to enter instructions, you can skip it because uh, we are instantiating two GPT-4s. One of them is going to instruct the other one anyway. It's going to suggest improvements. But if you wanted to suggest particular improvements that every turn, you can actually enter elaborate instructions and quote examples here. And, and then it'll pick up from there. When you enter instructions here, actually GPT-4 will read it and actually will will create a whole new review uh, instructions for the coder GPT. Anyway, as, as this is being coded, we see that our files are being accumulated. This is version one. Let's now run the version one. We did save for 10 iterations. Okay, this maybe it's moving a little faster, but oh, they seem to be growing and changing color. So this is now interesting. I guess they just popped out of existence. And then this is the second iteration. Now this one is 200 lines of code. Let's try this. I'm using live server, which you can on out it added pause and reset. So these red things are appearing and multiplying, and these green things are growing. Let's see where this goes. Let's go to the latest one, V5. Now this is 260 lines of code. Like I said, I'm using live server. Live server is an extension. You can search for it this one and install it and you'll get it right here from which you can launch html files let's go to the v5 and launch this simulation speed yeah it's not it didn't add a lot of variations we have the v6 let's try that yeah still the same at any given in time you can always stop this process and restart it that's why i included the sample instructions if you wanted to actually, you can also do something like this. I'm going to break out of this. This is our latest code, 270 lines of code. I'm going to copy it into the first file, working file gpt4o.html. And I'm going to delete the rest. Because now if you start this autocoder and give it instructions, it'll actually pick up from where this file is. So let's go ahead and copy our sample instructions. Here, let's select. HTML, would you like to enable user guided mode? Let's say no. Let's say enter the number of iterations. Let's say five. And it's asking us that there are actually files with uh, working files existing in a directory. If we want to delete them, just start fresh. But we're going to say no here because we want to iterate over it. Say no. Select GPT-5 and now paste our instructions. And now let's see what happens. When we do this, the first file gets overridden. So we have already gotten the first situation. Let's try this. Again, we have the same uh, situation. Let's give it a chance to iterate over a few more uh, rounds. OK, now uh, this looks so much better. Live from count five. I wonder if it's going to increase. Oh, so they get old or something. Let's see what happens in future iterations, but we are already up to 300 lines of code and they're, they're all error free. That's why I love coding with uh, GPT-40. It really opens up new possibilities. Here we got the second, a third iteration and it's over 300 lines of code. I believe these uh, original creatures are trying to reach these other creatures, but they get too old too quickly or something like that and they uh, die. Okay, the next iteration has actually more creatures. Let's accelerate it. I guess they need to move a little faster. I'm curious if they could find their food quicker. We can always uh, try to modify it uh, using cursor, of course. Here we see that speed is five in the code. Let's turn it into actually 20. I'm not sure if this is the simulation speed or not. Let's try anyway. Oh yeah. Now they're still, so the simulation is running just faster. I think. Okay, if they don't find food, then they turn red. But when they eat food, then they go back to green. I guess they need to be in that color. Survive, it's like an indication. Indicate. Oh, I changed the speed to 100. That is for the life forms. 
Yeah, they seem to turn back the green sometimes. I am out running the last version it has generated. As you can see, if they can find a food, they remain green. Otherwise, they turn red. And then, unfortunately, pass away. See, this one just found food. That's why it's green. You may get this one, too. Yeah, this is going to be the last one surviving. They, they could be moving better. Anyway, so this is how it works. In a nutshell, it was able to generate 300 lines of code. No problem. But we've seen it can generate up to 500 as well. Let's, th let's take a look at the code. So this code uh, uses the Grok Unified, Cloud Unified, and OpenAI Unified classes that I've created. Simplify our lives. These are just classes that manage their message history, also make calls for Grok, Cloud, and OpenAI. So they will detect your API key directly from your environment variables, but you can enter it here as well for each uh, class or whichever one you're planning to use. So we import all of these into Autocoder, Auto-Instructed, and we import them, as you can see. And we ask a work on a project the user wants to work on, because we are going to dynamically create the file name, save it right here. Uh, we take the input of the user. Then uh, we get a file extension, and our working file name is working file. We dynamically create the file name. And then we ask if we, if the user wants to do a user guided mode. Yes, no. And if it's not user guided mode, then we set any iterations because if it's user guided mode, then it is uh, in an infinite loop. But if it's not, then we set it in any iterations that determines how many improvements you expect Autocoder to return. If we are using a user guided mode, we create an additional instructions that txt file, which we will use to insert additional manual instructions in between turns. And then we check if there are any files that contain working file in the main directory. So then we ask the user if they want to delete it or not, because if it's not deleted, then project will continue from working file.py, such as here, uh, the original file that is, uh, it's still it's going to have the model name in it, but the first file generated. So you can actually at any point, copy paste any code in here and continue from that. Anyway, and now we print the model choices and uh, we, we create the working file names based on the models. If it's Llama 3, then we instantiate Grok chat and we add a system message or my helpful coding assistant, please generate code based on the project description. And we are expecting it to return the code like this within the triple backticks Python and triple backticks. Uh, otherwise, if the model selection is GPT 4.0, then we instantiate GPT calls and we add the same system message. And otherwise, we just create, we are either using Opus, Sonnet, or Haiku. So we instantiate those models with the cloud chat and set the system message. And then we initiate a separate reviewer. And the reviewer is instructed right here. You're a code reviewer. So it's supposed to review the code with a critical mindset, provide feedback, try to find errors, and also try to improve and beautify the code. Feel free to change this part. Of course, uh, if you want a different outcome, this open working file is just a function to continually open the files, read from them, read its contents. We take in user input. If you user guided, then any iterations we set to infinity. Otherwise, we initialize it to zero. Additional instructions, an empty list, and we enter a while loop. And if you are in the first iteration, we check if it's user guided, then we read additional instructions. And then we augment the initial user input with the additional instructions. And now we override additional instructions that txt file every turn so that it is cleared for the next turn. And then we read the working files contents. And then we augment the initial user input with that. Let's say this is the file we're working on, working file name and working file content, plus the initial user input. And now we ask Coder GPT to return a response using the uh, chat method, which calls the get response method of the OpenAI Unified. Then when we have the response, then we split using a string methods. We split code out of the uh, Python uh, code uh, tags. And then uh, we open the file, working file name and write it and increase the end. If it's user guided, then we print this, please provide additional instructions and additional instructions.txt file and press enter to continue. Press enter to skip. 
get the additional instructions. This is this is to say this is for the first turn, and this is for every other turn. And we do the exact same thing again, but this time we are actually going to get a review conducted. So open, we open the working file, and now we ask GPT to review it by giving it the message, review the code based on the initial user instructions. And after that, we give that back to the coder GPT, coder agent that we are working on this. And then this is the GPT-4 response that we've gotten. There's a typo here, but no worries. But based on the initial user input, then we get that code again and write it to file. Of course, we enumerate the files so that it is written nicely. So this is about it. It works well. I hope, like I said, the code files will be, project files will be available in my Patreon, along with all the projects that, that we have looked at. I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next one. This was the end of our video, but I'd like to talk quickly about my Optic Streamer version 3 project. The streamer version 3 is a PyQt powered Py installer packaged Python project that I came up with. It uses your OpenAI API key to create course websites such as this one in real time. This is also deployed at Railway and including with audio. The ELIF clause in Python. So you have quite a lot of choices such as six different voice choices and over 50 languages that you can choose from. You can choose light or dark theme. When you go here to generate courses, you just enter a, a course that you would like to generate. For example, we just said permaculture basics and I can pick how many chapters I'd like to generate. And I'm just going to go ahead and generate it real quick. This, should, this shouldn't take too long. Our curriculum was created successfully. I can go into view course outline and search for that uh, permaculture. And I, as I can see, ethics and principles, design methods and tools, and practical applications. I can then actually uh, select this uh, course outline and continue to generate the course created in light mode. And then uh, the website will launch automatically and will be created for you in real time. And you can record it as I'm doing right now or actually live streaming. It's really up to you. And once it begins, we'll be able ethics to Ethics of care for the streaming. earth. Permaculture revolves around three core ethics, one of which is the care for the earth. This ethic... I'm gonna go ahead and pause it. If I were to let this run, then this entire course will be generated live and I can listen to it live. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. And if I were to let this course be generated, then it'll be under my view and launch generated courses. For example, I just created a course called Financial Basics for. Let's go ahead and launch. It's like this. I can actually switch to uh, light mode as well, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry, dark mode. And then I can re revisit this course. Both I can zoom in. Both is in text and. The importance of emergency funds. Yeah, it has three chapters which I can easily use. The benefit of this and what you'll get out of it is that instead of chatting with in a disorganized manner, this allows you to create structured courses that you can run and listen to before you go to sleep or just fill your time. When you have just five minutes or 10 minutes worth, you can visit these courses back whenever, anytime you like. AutoStreamer, you can download a free demo for from autostreamer.live. I'll put the link in the description. Mac version is coming soon. You can, if you click on the download free demo, it will take you to my Google Drive download. And these are the files you'll be downloading. AutoStreamer demo.exe is the same thing as this, except with limited features. And if you wanted to download the full version, then click in this, will take you to my Patreon shop, where it's currently only for $200 instead of $300. You can read all about it in uh, the website. You do need an OpenAI API key for this to work. And sometimes your this is a Py installer packaged PyQt Python application, so your McAfee or malware bytes may uh, flag it as as not good. But as a matter of fact, all you have to do is just make an exception for the program. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord or ask me the question that you have in Discord. Well, thank you for watching and do let me know what you think of this project. I was really proud of this one. And like I said, the code files will be available at uh, Patreon. And I also have special tiers for one-on-one -on -one meetings with me, if that's something you're interested in. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.